Ever wondered how a water pump can draw water from a well or a sump and push it up against gravity? It's a question that could spark a curiosity in the minds of many, isn't it? Perhaps you've pondered over this while watering your garden or filling your swimming pool. It's not magic, it's science, and the science behind it is both intricate and captivating. So are you ready for a deep dive into mechanics? Well, hold on to your curiosity as we delve into the fascinating world of water pumps. A water pump, a simple device yet so crucial in our daily lives. Imagine a day without water at your disposal, a day without showers, without the ability to quench your thirst or water your plants. Sounds tough, doesn't it? This is where water pumps come into play. They are the unsung heroes that bring water to our homes, our farms and our factories. Water pumps are used in a myriad of ways. From the small pump in your fish tank to the large ones that help irrigate fields, they are everywhere. In our homes, they help bring water to our taps. In agriculture, they help irrigate vast fields. In industries, they are used for cooling machinery and for many other purposes. So, water pumps, these humble devices, play an essential role in our lives, often without us even realizing it. But how does a water pump manage to do all this? Let's find out. At its core, a water pump operates on a simple principle. This principle is all about creating a pressure difference. You see, in the natural world, fluids like water tend to flow from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. What a water pump does is use this natural tendency to its advantage. To understand this, think of a water pump as a kind of traffic conductor for water. It creates a low pressure zone within itself. This low pressure zone is like an open invitation for water to flow in. Water, being the obedient fluid that it is, rushes in to fill this low pressure area, essentially entering the pump. But what happens next? Well, the water doesn't get to stay in this low pressure comfort zone for long. As soon as it enters the pump, it gets thrust into a high pressure zone. This high pressure zone is created by the pump's motor, which uses energy to increase the water's pressure. This is the equivalent of our traffic conductor, suddenly telling the water, move along now, nothing to see here. And so the water is forced to move on. But here's the interesting part. The high pressure zone isn't just any random direction. It's specifically directed towards the outlet pipe of the pump. So the water has no choice but to move along the path laid out for it by the pump, up the outlet pipe and out into the world. This is how a water pump is able to draw water from a lower level, like a well or a sump, and push it up to a higher level, like the overhead tank in your house. It's all a matter of manipulating pressure zones and directing the flow of water. In essence, the water pump is a master of persuasion. It persuades the water to move where it wants it to go, not by force, but by manipulating the environment and making the water think it's simply following its natural tendencies. So, the next time you see water gushing out from your taps, remember it's all about pressure difference. Just like any machine, a water pump is made up of several key components. Let's delve into these components and understand their roles in the operation of a water pump. The heart of any water pump is the impeller. This is a rotating device, usually made of metal or plastic, that moves the water. When the impeller rotates, it creates a force that pushes water out of the pump. Think of it like a fan. Just as a fan moves air when its blades spin, an impeller moves water. Next, we have the casing. This is the outer shell of the pump that houses the impeller. The casing is designed in such a way that it guides the water to the impeller and then out of the pump. It's a bit like a guide tunnel, ensuring that the water goes exactly where it should. Then we have the motor. This is the power source that drives the impeller. The motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy, which then spins the impeller. Without the motor, the impeller won't spin. And without the impeller spinning, the pump can't move water. Of course, we can't forget about the seals. These are responsible for preventing water from leaking out of the pump. Seals are typically placed where the shaft of the motor goes into the pump casing. They form a tight barrier that stops water from escaping. Just imagine what would happen if water started leaking out. It would be a mess and the pump wouldn't work properly. Lastly, there are other components like the shaft and bearings. The shaft connects the motor to the impeller allowing the motor's energy to be transferred to the impeller. Bearings, on the other hand, reduce friction and ensure smooth operation of the pump. Each component plays a crucial role in ensuring the efficient operation of the water pump. 
and with a good understanding of these components, you'll be well equipped to understand how a water pump works, maintain it properly, and troubleshoot any issues that might arise. Now that we understand the principle and components, it's time to see how they all come together. Our journey begins with the motor. The motor is the heart of the water pump, providing the power needed for the pump to operate. Once switched on, the motor starts turning the impeller. Imagine the impeller as a fan, but instead of moving air, it's designed to move water. As the impeller spins, it creates a low pressure area at its center. This is the starting point of the water's journey. The low pressure acts like a vacuum, drawing water into the pump. This is where the suction pipe plays its part. Attached to the pump casing, the suction pipe is the pathway for the water to enter the pump from the source, be it a well, a pond or a reservoir. Now picture this, the water, once stationary, is now caught in a whirl of activity. It's pulled into the pump, finds itself in the center of the spinning impeller, and then something remarkable happens. The impeller, with its curved blades, forces the water outwards. This is due to centrifugal force, which is the tendency of an object following a curved path to fly outwards, away from the center of the curve. As the water is pushed outwards, it moves into the pump casing. The pump casing is specifically designed to guide the water towards the discharge pipe. It does this efficiently, ensuring minimal loss of energy. It's here that the water experiences a high pressure area. Remember how the impeller created a low pressure area to draw water in? Well, it also creates a high pressure area on the outside. This high pressure propels the water through the discharge pipe and out of the pump. This is the end of the water's journey within the pump, but it's just the beginning of its journey to where it's needed, whether that's a home, a farm, or a manufacturing plant. The entire process, from the turning of the impeller to the water being expelled from the pump, happens continuously and rapidly. This is why water pumps are so effective at moving large volumes of water over considerable distances. In essence, the water pump is a beautifully orchestrated system. The motor, the impeller, the suction pipe, the pump casing and the discharge pipe all work together in harmony to move water from one place to another. It's important to note, however, that not all water pumps work exactly the same way. The basic principles remain consistent, but the specifics can vary depending on the type of pump. Some pumps, for example, use a diaphragm instead of an impeller, while others utilize pistons or gears. But regardless of the type, the ultimate goal is the same, to move water efficiently and effectively. And that, in a nutshell, is how a water pump works. Water pumps, they're more fascinating than you might have thought, right? A marvel of engineering that, despite its simplicity, plays a crucial role in our daily lives. Let's take a moment to recap what we've learned today. We kick things off by delving into the basic principle behind water pumps. They operate on a simple yet effective mechanism, suction and discharge. By creating a vacuum, water is sucked in, and with the help of the pump's mechanical force, it's then discharged, reaching areas it wouldn't naturally flow to. Then we took a closer look at the components of a water pump. Each part, from the impeller to the pump casing, has a vital role to play. They all work in harmony, ensuring the pump functions effectively and efficiently. Finally, we walked through the step-by-step -step working of a water pump. It's a cycle of suction and discharge repeated over and over again. The process might seem repetitive, but it's this consistency that keeps our homes and cities running smoothly. From providing us with clean drinking water to supporting our agricultural and industrial activities, the humble water pump is a silent hero. It's a testament to the ingenuity of human innovation, transforming a simple principle into a tool that sustains life and development. So next time you turn on your tap, remember the amazing journey the water has made, thanks to the humble water pump.